Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. What's gonna be the next problem? Let me see, let me see. Counting valleys. Oh, this one is interesting. Finally, something interesting. Gary is an avid hiker. He tracks his hike meticulously, paying close attention to small details like topography. During his last hike, he took exactly n steps. For every step he took, he noted if it was an uphill or a downhill step. Gary's hikes start and end at sea level, and each step up or down represents a one unit change in altitude. We define the following terms. Um, okay, this is interesting. This task has two terms defining a mountain and a valley, but the definition of mountain is completely irrelevant to the entire problem. So they just included it to, I don't know, to obfuscate the problem for some reason. Instead of trying to come up with the, with the actually difficult problem, they just obfuscate the description to waste your time. So we're not going to read that. Let's actually focus on valley definition. Valley is a sequence of consecutive steps below sea level, starting with a step down from sea level and ending with a step up to sea level. Given Gary's sequence of up and down step during his last hike, find and print the number of valleys he walked through. For example, if Gary's path is this, he first enters a valley two units deep, then he climbs out and up onto a mountain two units high. Finally, he returns to sea level and ends his hike. Let's take a look at the input format. Input format contains n and the string that describes the steps. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Let's jump into the implementation. Obviously, in this particular task, we're going to keep track of the current level uh, as a number. And for that, we need to be able to convert this log of steps into an actual steps above or below the sea level. So what I want to do, I want to create the function called delta, which takes a character, which can be either u or d, and converts it to an integer, which is a delta of level after the step. In case of u, the step is going to be upwards. In case of d, the step is going to be downwards. All right, we have this function, and this function is going to be really useful when we start to solve the problem. First thing I want to do is to convert this particular log into deltas instead of characters. To do that, we are going to map this string with deltas. So yeah, now we can work with it. Next, I want to actually go through this map and maintain the current sea level. So basically, I want to convert this map from relative levels to an absolute levels. So for that, we are going to use a function called scanL which takes a function of two arguments, b and a, takes the initial value of the state that you need to track and the elements that you're going to scan through. For example, if you have a list from one to five and you want to scan that list with plus and initial element zero, this is what you're going to end up with. So what it basically does, it uses zero as an initial state that is going to track through the entire process of iteration. And then it uses this operation and apply applies it to the current state and the next element it scans. And as you can see, it basically sums all of the numbers up through the scanning process, maintaining the state. So which means the first element is going to be zero. The second element is zero plus one. The third element is zero plus one plus two and so on and so forth. And this is exactly what we need to convert this map from relative values, minus one or one to absolute values. And we're going to do that absolutely the same way as we did with this particular list, because we just need to scan through the relative map and just sum things up. So these are relative values and you can already clearly see the valley. So it goes below the sea level and sea level is actually zero. So it goes below the sea level and ends at sea level. So in the absolute map, you can clearly see that thing. You can see that visually, but we need to encode it for the computer to actually identify. So to identify valleys, I want to group the elements of an absolute map using group by function. And for group by, we actually need to import data list. This function takes value of two arguments. And what it does, it scans the list of elements by pairs collecting the elements into a group. And once it finds the pair of elements for which this function return false, it separates that group and starts to collect the next group. So we need to craft this function so that it will group 
a valley separating everything else. And once it groups the valley, we can easily count them and solve the problem. So what is a valley? What is a valley or a mountain? Basically, valley or mountain actually starts or ends when one element is zero and another element is not zero. We can use this property of valley to craft a group function that will separate it from everything else. Basically, when x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero. And as you can see, it separated the valley. So I think it will also separate mountains if you think about it. So let's actually try to uh, modify that thing a little bit. I'm going to take the absolute map, the absolute map, put it here and for example, create uh, things like that. So this particular group separates mountains and valleys and it also separates I guess we can call them plateaus when the level is sea level. So yeah, if we make like this particular place longer, uh -huh. it will make uh, each and individual zero a separate group. But this is actually doesn't really matter because uh, later we're going to filter everything out. So uh, we need to filter out everything that is not a valley. And what is a valley? Valley is a section, is a group every element of which is a negative number, which makes it super easy to identify. So basically, we're trying to filter all that are less than zero. And we are ended up with valleys. As the final solution, we just have to calculate the length of that particular list. It's one. And uh, just realize that we're using this thingy, which is not the full solution. Full solution would be something like this where we convert the string to relative map of levels, then we convert relative map to absolute map, then we group all of the mountains and valleys, we filter all of the valleys and calculate the length of that list. So this is actually the final solution uh, for our problem. So let's actually encode it. So solution just takes a string and returns an integer. So we're just going to copy paste that, remove this hard coded input and convert it into a point free notation as simply a composition of functions. And we can double check that it works and it does indeed work. And now let's wrap it into an interactive program. Interact. So we separate input by words. The first word is going to be n, the amount of steps. We don't need it. But tail actually returns a list of strings. But our solution accepts a single string. So to extract the single string from that list after tail, we have to take a head of it. Uh, then we pipe it through the solution and solution returns integer and we convert back to a string. So this should be the final submission to this problem. Let's copy paste it here. Let's check how it compiles on their side. And yeah, it compiles on their side and let's submit that code. Let's submit that code. All right, it works, I guess. Next problem. Next problem. The next problem is going to be drawing book. Bree's drawing teacher asks her class to open their books to a page number. Bree can either start turning pages from the front of the book or from the back of the book. She always turns pages one at a time. When she opens the book, page one is always on the right side, like that. When she flips uh, page one, she sees page two and three. Each page, except the last page, will always be printed on both sides. The last page may only be printed on the front, given the length of the book. If the book is n pages long and she wants to turn the page p, what is the minimum number of pages she will turn? She can start at the beginning or the end of the book. Given n and p, find and print the minimum number of pages Brie must turn in order to arrive at page p. So, and as the input, we are given just n and and P and we need to print the minimum number of pages. Okay, let's start with the solution. Solution is just a function from two integers to a single integer. But since I want to use interact function this time, it's just easier to accept a list of integers and simply pattern match them like that. And the solution is basically a minimum between two values, the amount of pages from the front and the amount of the pages from back. And the question is, how do we calculate those values? 
So how to calculate the amount of page turns from the front? So let's try to visualize the pages. The first page will look like that. We don't have anything on the left side and we have one on the right side. The next one is going to look like that and so on and so forth. If you want to find page one, if you want to find page one, you don't have to turn anything. You're already on page one, so it's zero. If you want to find page two, you have to do one turn. If you want to find page three, you again have to do one turn. Four is going to be two turns. Five again is going to be two turns. Six is three. Seven is three. And the left column is P, by the way. And we can clearly see the pattern that amount of page turns that we have to do from the front is P divided by two using the integer division, which discards the remainder. But what about uh, turning pages from the back? To turn pages from the back, we have to find amount of page turns until the end of the book and just subtract amount of page turns from the front. And that's going to be how many times you have to turn the page from the back. And that should be the final solution. We just find the minimum between these two values. But as usual, this is just a dump solution let's wrap it into an interactive program and this time i want to use my favorite interact function because i love it so much first we separate the input by words we have two words anyway we convert them to integers and we pipe them through the solution since solution returns an integer we just convert it to string and that should be it let's uh, check how this thing works uh, let's run it on their site hopefully it will compile on their site it compiles on their site and let's submit that for a final submission to secure epic victory royale yes it works next problem Ugh.